Okay, good day, everyone. Um, we will get started in a second. So any question before we get started? All right, okay. So um, just one quick thing. Um, one of the classmates wanna make up the, the, the test number one. So you can go ahead and make it up, right? Latoya, it's available now, okay? For your test number one. Okay, and um, all right, so we will continue where we left off from last class. So we're gonna uh, look at chapter one. So go to Blackboard, open a test book, uh, turn to page 73. And we're gonna go over uh, the even problems in the back of your uh, exercise uh, section 3.1. So we left from last time, okay. And we're gonna look at question 12, 14, and 16. Okay. All right, so first of all, I'll read a question uh, really quickly. And I'm gonna remind you what, we, what we're dealing with uh, from last class. So basically we, we learned a compound interest formula. Compound interest formula. So uh, any balance equal to principal times one plus interest, annual interest rate over number of compounding period over and raised to NT, right? And here again, P represent principal. And uh, rate, uh, R represent annual interest rate. N is number of compounding period per year. Compounding per year. And also T is time years. So basically just learning one formula, right? Um, this is the main formula we focus on in terms of dealing with the comp compound interest. Okay, so now look at question 12. So how much money will be in account yielding 3.09% interest compounded weekly? So the compounding period is compounding weekly. If $7,800 is deposited for five and a half years. So if you go over the question and we'll be able to find out some of the given information here, this 3.09% is annual interest rate, 3.09%, so that's given. So basically you turn into a decimal 0 0.0309. And then we are also given this principle, right? 7,800 as a principle. So P is given $7,800. And then uh, time T is given five and a half years. Okay. And the number of compounding period that's also given because it's compounding weekly. So that means number of compounding period is 52 per year. Okay. So basically we know all four pieces of information then you can just plug into the compound interest formula to get an ending balance. So A equal to P times one plus R over N to the NT. But again, throwing all the numbers, principal is 7,800 multiplied by one plus annual interest rate is 0 0.0309 over 52. And five and a half years, 5.5 years. Okay, so this exponent is 52, number of compoundings per year times 5.5. Okay, then uh, one, one thing you can do is you can calculate this in Excel or in the, in the calculator, whichever you prefer. So I'm gonna show you how to get a, uh, get a result in Excel. So in the open Excel program, you can also do that. Uh, you can also try it in your um, in your calculator, right? Definitely. Okay. You share the screen with you. Here you go. So it's seven eight hundred multiplied by one plus point zero three zero nine. And by 12, no, by 52. Okay, 
and then raised to exponent is 52 times 5.5. Um, and that should give you the result right away, right? So if you hit enter, you get a result. So it's $9,244.45 if you run it to two decimal places. So the ending balance is not that nine thousand two hundred forty-four dollars and then forty-five cents. That's the final answer for question um, twelve. Nine thousand two hundred forty-four dollars and forty-five cents. Okay. Any question on question um, twelve? All right. So now let's take a look at question fourteen. Read the question really quickly. At what interest rate compounded daily with $5,000 grow to $8,000 in seven years and then five months? Okay. All right, so here definitely we're looking for the interest rate, meaning R is not known, right? R is unknown. We're looking for that. And we know the compounding period is because it's compounded daily, so that N equals 365. And we also know the principal. Principal is $5,000. Ending balance is $8,000. And then the time T is also given seven years and then five months. So you turn into a fraction, mixed number, right? Seven and five over 12 years. And typically uh, you can turn into an um, improper fraction by multiply the whole number, denominator, Seven times 12 is 84, 84 adding five is 89 over 12 years. Okay, then we get time T, we get all of this, and then uh, we are actually solving for rate. So first one, let's throw all, the, all of this into the compound interest formula. One plus R over N to N T. So throwing on the numbers here, so 8,000 equal 5,000 times one plus, R is not known, but uh, A is 365, okay. And the exponent is 365 times 89 over 12. The reason why I didn't divide to a, didn't keep as a decimal number because five by 12 is not the way I run the answer. So I'm gonna keep um, answer as accurate as possible. So here we have this set up. Now next thing is we try to solve for solve for R. All right, so first of all, we divide in 5,000 from both sides of the equation. So we cancel 5,000 on the right. And um, 8,000 by 5,000, actually that's, you can divide into that, it's 1.6. That's where I run the answer like that. One plus R over 365. And we can simplify this exponent, right? By multiplying 365 by 89 and divide by 12. And if you, okay, 365 times 89, Okay, so 32, so we're still gonna keep it, we multiply 365 by 89, you get 32,485 by 12, okay. So now the, the reason I do that, because to make it a uh, slightly easier to move forward. So right here, we're gonna isolate. So reverse order, put a variable on the, on the right, of uh, the 365 raised to 32,485 by 12. Then on the right, it's 1.6. Now we need to get rid of this exponent here. So you, you're gonna raise to the reciprocal power. So here reciprocal power of 365 raised to 32,485 by 12. And the reciprocal of this is 12 over 32,485. On the right, we do the same thing. 1.6 raised to 12 over 32, 485. Okay. And this 
So using the exponent property, you can have a to the x raised to the y power and become a x y. Right? And when you multiply these two reciprocal numbers, it becomes one and get rid of the exponent. So we get end up with one plus r over 365 on the left and then 1.6 raised to 12 over 32,485. The next step is get r over 365 by itself, subtract one from both sides of the equation. Okay, we get r over 365. Okay, and that's equal to 1.6 raised to 12 over 32,485 minus one. Then in order to get rid of the denominator, you multiply by 365 from both sides of the equation. Okay, we cancel the uh, the number i is by itself. Okay, so now i is equal to this. So we put into the cell to get a result. Open parentheses, um, it's 1.6 raised to, and put the exponent in the parentheses 12 by 32,485. Okay, and minus one. Now we close parentheses and then multiply by 365. Um, that will give us the answer, right? Once you hit enter. And the radius, um, we run it to four decimal places. Okay, so it's 0 0.0634. So 0 0.0634. 0 0.0634. Okay, so that's about 6.34%. Any question on this? And that's question 14. And let's look at question 16. Again, this is a quick exercise reviewing the formula we learned from last Wednesday. And question 16, we have a, how much will money, how much will the money be in account um, if $7,500 is kept on deposit in account for 10 years, three months at uh, eight and three eighth percent interest compounding monthly. So you're looking for the ending balance, will, right? Will means it's in the future. So you're looking, talking about future value of the, so this is ending balance we're talking about. And we're given the principal, right? Principal is $7,500. And uh, time t is given is 10 years, three months. So 10 years, three months, you turn into a fraction, it's three over 12. And here you, you, it's easy to convert it as a, as a decimal because three over 12 is 0.25, it's a quarter. So it's 10.25 years. Okay. And the reason why I don't keep it as a fraction because you can turn into a decimal with the well running numbers. Okay. Then we get T. Now the rate is also given. It's A and a three eighth percent. And um, we turn into a decimal, it's 8.375 percent. Now we turn again, we convert it back to decimal, it's 0 0.08375. Okay. So you get a rate, get a time T, get a principal. And we know the compounding period, it's compounding daily, no monthly. That means A equal to 12. So now once we know all of this and plug into the formula P minus one plus R over N to the NT. All right. So now throw your numbers into the formula. So 7,500 times one plus the rate is 0 0.08375 by 12. Now the exponent is 12 times 12 point, then 10.25. So easily we can use Excel to get a result. Okay, let's go back here. So we get 7,500 times one plus 0 0.0. Let me see, number really quickly, 
0.08375 divided by 12 and raise to exponent. And make sure you put an exponent in parentheses because exponent itself is an operation. So it's multiplication operation. So 12 times 10.25. Okay. And that should be the proper input into the Excel. And once you have this and T enter, right, get a result. So you get end up with the $17,643.35. That should be the final answer. So $17,643.35. Okay. And so this again, um, the most important thing is uh, summarize what you have from the question and then try to figure out what, we are, what we're looking for. That's the key thing here. And let's take a look at question 18 and 20, right? So um, for, for your assignment from section 3.1, you can stop at 21. So you don't have to go beyond 21, right? After 21 is optional. So if you want to do it, do it. If not, that's okay. You're obligated to complete up to question 21. Okay, so I will wrap up this by going over 18 and 20. Okay. Maybe uh, I'll give you some time to look at these two questions before we go over the answer. 18 and 20, right? Give you a couple minutes, look at it, and try to use a formula to solve it. Let me quickly take attendance. Okay. Okay, so let's look at question 18. Anybody want to um, share your opinion or your, your answer on question 18? What are we looking for here? The 
the principle. Exactly. Very good. So now, right, that is indication is principle. That's not known. What's given here? The amount. Okay, great. Arisa. Yes, it is, right? We're looking for the amount. Okay, um, amount is six, 65,000, right? And what else is given? The time, 17 years and the rate. Very good, 17 years and rate, perfect. One, three, eight percent, very good. And then typically we turn the rate into a decimal numbers. So it's 4.375%. And also um, that becomes 0 0.04375, right? And one last thing we need is it's compounded monthly, right? So number of compounding periods 12 per year. Okay, and then once you have four elements, remember we have five variables in the in the formula. If we, have, we know four of them, then we can find out the missing one. So here, um, so ending balance is given. Principle is what we're looking for. And then again, we're gonna throw in all the numbers into the formula. So you get 65,000 here. I go principle times one plus. This is 0 0.04375 by 12. And raised to um, seven, um, 12 times 17. And we can get a well running numbers here for the exponent. If you want to simplify that, feel free to do so. 12 by 17, that turned out to be 204. So the exponent here is 204. Okay, go from here. So 65,000 equal to principal times one plus 0 0.04375 by 12. And 204. And you ought to get P by itself, which is dividing both sides equation by the exponent. One plus 0 0.04375 by 12 raised to 204 power on both sides equation. 0 0.04375 by 12 raised to 204. Now again, we uh, get rid of that term here. Principle is by itself, and then principle becomes. We write it is 65,000 over 1 plus 0 0.04375 over 12 raised to 204 power. Okay. And I'm going to quickly show you um, how to do this in Excel. 375, 200. Okay. There you go. Um, I put it here. So we get 65,000. That's numerator. And divide by denominator, put in the parentheses first. And okay, and then we divide by um, open parentheses for denominator, one plus 0 0.04375, dividing by 12, and raised to 204th power. And once you do that, and then close parentheses. And this is complete input. And then he entered, you get a result, right? So that should be $30,938.14. If you want to deposit that amount of money, you end up with $65,000 in, in 17 years. So it's, if you look at the amount, it's more than doubling, right? It's slightly more than doubling, which is pretty, pretty good. So $30,938. Fourteen cents. So we we're looking for different things, right? Previous one we're looking for rate. We're looking for ending balance, beginning balance, the principal, and also sometimes we may looking for the time t, right? That's also possible. Let's see if the last question is about the time t. Let's look at it. Okay, question 20, how long? Yeah, it is about 20. So we actually cover all the cases here. We looking for how long, meaning 20 is not known, right? And we know the beginning balance principle is 3,800, right? And I grow to 10,500, that's a ending balance, $10,500. 
the rate is given uh, is 4.45 percent and the decimal 0 0.0445 and we also know um, compounding period which is weekly meaning 52 weeks in a given year now we have all four elements and the only thing we don't know is time t right so five variables if you know four of them then the missing one will be able to we will be able to figure out that so ending balance equal to principal times one plus r over n to the nt and again we're still working with the same formula so ending balance is 10,500 the principal is 3,800 times one plus 0 0.0445 over 52 and then time t we don't know here yeah, so 52 t okay and you'll get rid of um, get rid of this coefficient. So we're dividing 3,800 from both sides of the equation first. That's the very first step, cancel that. And then you can drop two zeros, right? Same amount of zero, drop that and reverse order. Yeah, we're gonna get one plus 0 0.0445 over, over 52 raised to 52 T. And the right is 105 over 38. Now, um, so what do we do after that? Anybody remember? In order to isolate a T, what do we do? Okay. So taking LM from both sides of the equation, right? Just like the other one. When we're talking about the uh, um, population growth, we actually perform similar operation at 0 0.0445 and dividing by 52 raised to 52 T. So basically taking the LM from both sides of the equation. And in terms of equation, when you perform the operation on one side of the equation, then you have to perform the exact same thing on the right, on the other side of the equation. So to keep it balanced. So this is a very important um, piece of information. Okay, so now um, 52T goes in front. Okay, so now we separate them. 52T times ln of this one plus 0 0.0445 over 52. On the right is ln of 105 over 38. Now eventually we need to get rid of 52 and ln. So dividing both sides of the equation by 52 times ln of 1 plus 0 0.0445 over 52. Same thing on the right, 52 times ln of 1 plus 0 0.0445 or 52. Okay, cancel 52, cancel LN, and T is by itself, and T is what we're looking for. So T is equal to that, let's see what that is. But again, um, I'm gonna show you how to perform this operation in Excel. So it's gonna be um, LN equal to LN, and 105 over 38. Um, that's numerator and dividing by denominator open parentheses 52 times ln of 1 plus 0 0.0445 by 52. Okay, now once you um, input it properly, then we'll be able to get a result right away. Yeah, let's see what that is. Just hit enter, get a result. Okay, so it's about 22.8, right? So you can just um, run it to one decimal, that's okay. So 22.8 years. And 22.8 years. And from there, I think they want to ask us to convert it to report your answer in years and weeks, nearest weeks. So we know that it's going to be 22 years and you multiply by 0.8. by 52 weeks and we get 22 years 0.8 times 52 
and that's another be 41.6 weeks. And they want to run into exact weeks. So that should be approximately 22 years and 42 weeks. All right. And so that's how you will run it uh, the whole week, right? 22 years, 42 weeks. Any questions on this? All right, and so we wrap up the exercise in the back of, again, you are obligated to complete up to question 21, right? Um, you don't have to complete the rest of the question if you don't want to. You need 23, 25, and 27. You could just skip it, okay, as your homework assignment. All right, I'm gonna get started on the new section today, section 3.2. And basically, we continue. From, it's built based on the section 3.1 um, compound interest formula, but we look at uh, more interesting cases combining different compounding period. Okay, so now I want you to open the um, PowerPoint on 3.2. And we're going to talk about continuous compounding. Um, effective interest rate, and also the bond pricing in section 3.2, but uh, one thing at a time, right? We're gonna talk about the, first of all, let's look at the continuous compounding formulas and how we de derive the continuous compounding formula. I will show you that in a second. Share the screen. Go. Okay. All right. So, first major topic in section three point two is continuous compounding, then effective interest rate, and the bond price. Well, three major topics. And let's look at the continuous compounding formula first. So, this is the formula we learned from the section three point one, right? We call this compound interest formula. So the continuous compounding formula actually come from the compound interest formula. And we, we already know of this P is principal amount and it's number of compounding period, I is annual interest rate, time is 20 in years, right? So we know all of this. And to develop the equation, determine the compound, continuous compounding interest that we are assuming principal equal to $1, right? and then I equal 100%, time t equal to one. And that n approaches infinity. And if you look at the next table, you will see what we talk about, right? But remember that p is one, rate is 100%, time t is one year. That's assumptions we are making here. Now let's move on to the next table. So first of all, yearly. In, under the compounding yearly, remember P is one, right? Rate is one, and then time T is one. Okay, that's all one. So if it's compounding yearly, that means N equal to one. So um, we apply the compound interest formula. Let's see what is the ending balance here. So it'll be one times one plus, the rate is one over one to the uh, one times one, right? So that's basically give us one times two to the first power. So this is one times two, give us two. So that means ending balance is two, if it is uh, compounded yearly. And if it is compounded quarterly, that means n equal to four. All right, so let's try that. Okay, so here, um, principle is one times one plus, now compounding here is four, so one over four quarter, right? And n is four times one. Okay, so this is basically one times 1.25 raised to the fourth power. And we could easily find this in Excel, so let me double check. Let me show you how to get this in Excel. Okay, so we do one times 1.25 raised to fourth power. Okay, this turned out to be 2.441406. 2.441406. So 
Now I want you to uh, finish the rest of them, right? So if it's a compounding monthly, compounding daily, compounding hourly, and this is a given compounding period. So monthly and equal 12, daily 365, hourly, it, it could be secondly, right? It could be compounded by minutes, compounded by seconds. Now the, the aim become much bigger, right? Okay, try this three, see what you end up with. And you will see how this um, continuous compounding was developed. I'll give a couple minutes, quickly calculate all these three. All right, so let's look at the monthly, daily, and hourly compounding. So still, we follow the same formula, one plus, one times. One times one plus um, one over 12, and then it will be 12 times one. So it will be one times one plus one over 12, to the 12th power. Now one more time, if you throw into the Excel, will be one times one plus one over 12, raised to um, 12, 12 power, and it becomes 2.613035. 2.613035. Two point six one three zero three five. Three zero three five. Okay. As you can see, this actually become bigger and bigger, right? So that's a trend. Um if it is compounded daily, that will be one times one over one plus one over three hundred sixty-five and dividing by 365 times one. And this is gonna be um, one plus one over 365 to 365th power. If you don't, do not want to write a one in the front, you can omit it, that's not needed. So, so all we have to do is we do equal to one plus one over 365 raised to 360 to the power. Then now that becomes 
now we're gonna move on, right? So to the hourly, maybe one of the minutes, right? How many minutes in a given year? You can just multiply this by uh, 60 minutes, right? That we multiply this hour, 87, 60 by 60 minutes to get total minutes. Also seconds multiplied by another 60, then you get seconds. And then that's how you, if you wanna move forward, but uh, let's see, A760. And then this is A760, compounded hourly meaning you receive interest 8,760 times over a year times one. So it becomes one plus one over A760 raised to A760 power. And one more time you, let's calculate in Excel. So one plus one over A760 raised to A760. And then he entered, right? So you get a result. So it's 2.718. Now you see that it's getting an older number. So older number, uh, we call that natural number, 2.718, 127, 2.718, 127. And this is getting closer to this. And um, if assuming A is approaching infinity, infinity, this case indicating compounding continuously. So if it is compounding continuously, meaning n approaches infinity, then this is becomes E, older number, right? Compounding continuously. And E is what we call natural number or older number. The mathematician who discovered this using this procedure and with a formal proof is called Ola. It's a Sweden mathematician. Also, it's called natural number. We use this in a, a population growth examples, right? The population growth is compounded continuously, meaning population increases or decreases on, on a continuous basis. Same thing here. I'm gonna show you something, uh, some real example in, in the financial world, which is also uh, compounded continuously. Okay, so one second, let me show you that right now. If you go to Google, if you type in, uh, let me share the screen like this. You just type in national debt. And this is one of the, real world example, you know, about a continuous compounding. I just want to show you the feature of the, what happened to continuous compounding. Okay, national debt clock, right? 2020, no, 2021, right? And you, you can go to this organization called National US Debt Clock. And if you click on it, and you look at this, um, this number right here, this is US national debt, right? So currently, if you look at it, every second is going up. Although it's going up by, by a little bit, right? But still it's going up. So this is a key feature of the continuous compounding, meaning you are earning interest infinitely many times in a given second, okay? And if you look at it, this is about 28 trillions already. And yeah, that's basically, this is a real time clock, right? So um, that means this interest is compounded continuously. That's why it's keep going up every second pass by. Okay. And this is very um, typical example of continuous compounding. And it actually come from the uh, compound interest formula, right? This continuous compounding formula. Now let's keep um, keep going All right. so we, we actually come up with this I want a number so we see in the locks so um, basically when a approaches infinity here you can simplify that what we did in the table um, this limit will approach e which is 2.718281828 right it's just like pi e is like pi it has infinitely many decimal places 
we refer to as natural base. Okay. An algorithm with base E is called a uh, natural logarithm, LN, right? We've been using this, but uh, they actually come from this um, order number or natural number. Any question on this, how to derive the order number? You can also derive yourself, right? Uh, very easily, you just keep going using the table, just keep increasing the n, right? Give a bigger n, keep going, and eventually you will arrive at a very close number to this, to the one we show here. Okay, then um, we actually, already learn how to graph the exponential function with the base E, right? So basically you just pick some X values, number negative two, we actually do negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, right? And you find the Y values by plugging into the, um, this exponent to the base E. Then we get all these numbers and then you can plot it. I right? found a graph here. So you see, this is the graph, right? The, the point of given all the pairs. Negative one correspond to the point 37. So this negative one here, get that point. And then zero is one right here. And then one is 2.72 is right here. And as you can see two is 7.39. So go up here. And you're connecting all those, um, four points and then you get this exponential function with base e yeah. you extend it in both directions and here x-axis is what we call the uh, horizontal asymptote and the inverse function of this is what we call ln of x right so this is symmetry line y equal to x is symmetry line inverse function basically the y becomes x x becomes y so this is basically the essential um, characteristics of the inverse functions. And if we get a, this, all these points symmetrical with respect to, if you draw this, they are symmetrical with respect to the uh, symmetry line here, yeah, y equal to x. Then you get all these four points. Now you connect it, you get the inverse function. We call this ln of x. This is graph for the ln of x, it also extending in both directions. And if you look at it for the mirror image based on the symmetry line, y equal to x. And yeah, that's inverse function of natural logarithm um, will be the oh, inverse function of an exponent with base e is natural logarithm function. Okay. So then they are inverse of each other. And this is f and one of x is called inverse function of of f of x. And then inverse, that's why we have this ln of e to the x. It becomes x, right? Because they offset each other. Uh, natural logarithm and then exponents with base e, they are inverse function, they undo each other. That's why the answer is, is turned out to be x. Also e, if you have ln of x, you become exponent and then log natural logarithm, they undo each other, it becomes x. It's because of the inverse nature. Okay. And again, the, you probably see this a lot in the algebra course, and we just review this really quickly. So the continuous compounding formula actually come from this. So it's basic principle times natural logarithm with base E raised to RT. Okay, so we know A is ending balance, right? And then P is principle, I is any interest rate, T is time T. Okay. And there's a formula here to use in terms of continuous compounding. And let's take a look at how we apply this formula to, to do an actual calculation here. So that's assuming you have a thousand dollars deposit into a treasury account, right? Just like 
and the national debt actually it's it's borrowed by the um, Federal Reserve, right? Federal Reserve. So basically, if you lend a thousand dollar to Federal Reserve, so the Federal Reserve uh, into the Treasury bond, right? And you get paid continuously in terms of interest. So this is how how that works. How the national debt works. Basically, Federal Reserve borrow money from the investors, and they pay investors on a continuous basis. Now you have a thousand dollars, right? Let's say you lend it to the Federal Reserve, and they tell they tell you that they they're gonna pay you five percent compounding continuously. So this is very important. You have to see this word com compounding continuously to know we can have to apply this. And how much will be in the account after ten years? Then again, um, we have formula here. All we have to do is figure out what's given here. So this thousand dollars is initial investment. You can also call that principal. So principal is thousand dollars. Okay, and then we know the interest rate, which is five percent. Okay, and turn into 0 0.05 decimal numbers. And time t is ten years. And we know that it's continuous compounding. So in this continuous compounding formula, we only have four variables. E is not counting as a variable, right? So I only have four formula, four variables here. If you know three of them, you'll be able to find out the missing one. And the missing one here is ending balance. Okay. So all we have to do is throwing all numbers into the formula. So we get A equal to mm -hmm. principal times E to the RT. So it's principal, which is $1,000 times E Rate, to, uh, rate is 0 0.05 times 10. And again, you have to use a, either a calculator or Excel to do this. And let me show you how to get this in Excel really quickly. So you just have to do this. Um, so we get $1,000 times EXP, right? That's exponent of the base E, EXP. And I put an exponent in the parentheses um, so exponents is, let me say, 0 0.05 times 10. 0 0.05 times 10. All right, so once you input it like this, this EXP represents E raised to this power, E raised to this power. Then the result turned out to be um, $1,648 and then 72 cents after this time. So $1,648.72. So the ending balance is $1,648.72. Okay. And that's how you deal with this con continuous compounding problem. And the formula actually is even simpler compared to the compound interest formula, right? Because, uh, because the nature of this but uh, this actually continuous compounding method is the best among all other compounding methods because uh, you receive interest infinitely many times over the life of the over the life of the of the time okay of the life of the loan okay so this is is the best option so if you offer you know different investment return options continuous compounding is always the best. Any question on this? Now let's move on to the next question, um, question number two. Um, how much should be deposited in an account yielding 4.3% compounding continuously so that we will have $100,000 in 10 years and 10 months. Okay. Anybody want to um, give an opinion? What's, what are we looking for here? Principal? Exactly, right? That uh, should be deposit. Exactly. How much? Right now, right? So basically, you're looking for principal. Okay. And what's given here?
we know this interest rate, right? The rate is given 4 and 38 percent. Okay, that's given. So it's 4.375 percent. And then turn your decimal is 0 0.04375. We know one um, nothing. And we will have a hundred thousand dollars, right? So that's uh, ending balance is given a hundred thousand. And then time T is also given 10 years and then 10 months. And basically we're gonna turn into a fraction. So it's 10 and 10 over 12. Okay. So we can turn time T into a fraction. And here we go. So we just simplify and simplify this. If you turn into a improper fraction, that'll be 10 times 12, 120 adding 10, 130 by 12. And now uh, we're looking for P. So apply the formula P times E to the RT. I just have to plug in all the numbers into the formula. So 100,000, that's ending balance. We call principal times E. And uh, the rate is 0 0.04375 times this. Time T is in fraction 130 by. Okay. Now, basically, you just have to uh, get rid of this exponent on both sides of the equation by so you're dividing e. And if you want to multiply this by 130 and turn you a single number, we can do that. Let's see what that is 0 0.04375 times 130. And about, um, let's see what that is 5.6875. So if you want to simplify this, and turn into a single number, you can do that. 0 0.04375 times 130 by 12. By 12. Okay. We divide both sides of the equation by that exponent. Okay, and if you get rid of that, and P is by itself. So P is the quotient of that, 100,000 and you multiply this number by 130, and this turned out to be E raised to 5.6875 over 12. Okay. Now once you simplify to this extent, then we go into the big cell. So you get 100,000 dividing by EXP, right? E raised to EXP, Open parentheses, and it's 5.6875 dividing by 12. 5.6875 by 12. Okay. And now, if you input it correctly, then you just hit enter and get a result. So it turned out to be $62,353.32. That means that's your initial investment. Once you put in the initial investment, then you get the final result. So $62,253.32. So this is approximately 62000 dollars and 32 cents. And that's your initial investment in order to achieve this goal. In 10 years, it's like almost doubling your money, right? Based on this rate, combining continuously. Now question three. So pretty straightforward, how long, right? Meaning you're looking for T, T is not known. We you take from 9,000 to grow to 15,000 at a four and a one eighth percent compounding continuously. Okay. So one more time, principal is given 9,000. And then ending balance is given 15,000. Interest rate that's given is 4.18%. This is 4.125%. The new decimal is 0 0.04125. Okay. Now we know three things. The only thing we don't know is time t, that's so for it. So a equals p times e to the rt uh, is 0 0.041. Yeah, let me just write out the formula first. Uh, 
RT. Now, next step is just plug in numbers, 15,000, equal to 9,000 times the um, R is 0 0.04125 times T. And we're solving for T, for solving for time T. And now first step, I divide 9,000 from both side equation. If you simplify that, 15,000 by 9,000 actually is 5 over 3. But you can simplify into a simple fraction, 5 over 3. Drop the zeros and then simplify further. Here we get E raised to 0 0.04125 times T. Then reverse the order, write E first, 0 0.04125 T equal to 5 over 3. And how do we proceed? How do we get rid of the base E? Ellen? Exactly, right? So taking Ln from both sides of the equation, very good. Ln of the whole thing, 0.04125t. Ln on the right hand side, do the same thing. Ln of 5 over 3. Now, um, Ln and E offset each other, they undo each other. So end up with 0.04125t equal to ln of 5 over 3. So the very last thing dividing both sides equation by the decimal number 0 0.014125. OK, now we got right t is by itself. So use either Excel or calculator quickly find out the result. So it's. Um, Ln of 5 over 3 by 0 0.04125. So we do Ln 5 over 3. I'm dividing by 0 0.04125. 4, yeah. yeah. Okay, so and then if you just see enter, you will get a result. Okay. So that turned out to be 12, 12 point above 12.40 years. Right? If you run to one decimal place. So it takes about 12.4 years to reach the goal. So whatever we end up with the time t, right? The unit is always years. Okay. And you want to con uh, convert back, I mean, to more detail uh, time, you can do that. Right? 10.4 as a month and then days. We're going to do that. That's, uh, that's doable. An example four at a low interest rate. So definitely low interest rate. You're looking for R. Compounding continuously and will seventy five hundred dollars grow to twelve thousand dollars in seven years and in seven months. So principal is given P is seventy five hundred. Ending balance twelve thousand. Then time T is given seven years and seven months. So if you turn this as a fraction, it will be seven and seven over 12. Okay. Then we get all these three. The only thing we don't know is interest rate. So we will use a, combined, a continuous compounding formula. Um, and before that, right, we can turn this as a extra improper fraction. Seven times 12 is 84, adding seven is 91 over 12. I'll make it slightly easier when we move forward into the RT. And one more time, three numbers, 12,000, 7,500 times E. R is what we're looking for, 91 over 12. And here we're solving for R. So first of all, dividing 7,500 from both sides of the equation. Cancel that. Then uh, we can drop the two zeros, right? If you want to. So it becomes 120 by 75. So E raised to 91 over 12 R equal to 120 over 75. Okay. Now from there, we will take in the LM from both sides equation. Okay. 
then the ln and exponent base e they offset each other 90 over 12 times r equal to ln of 120 over 75. And you multiply this by the reciprocal, so multiply by 12 over 91 from both side equation. Then this reciprocal offset each other, it right, becomes one. So i is by itself. So all we have to do is uh, multiply this two. And get the result, we get an interest rate. Uh, so one more time. Yeah. We multiply this ln of 120 by 75. Okay. And multiply by 12 over 91. And that should give us the proper answer. This turned out to be a four decimal place from them to 0 0.06 20. 0 0.06 20. That's the answer. 0 0.06 20. And then if you turn into a percentage, it will be 6.20%. That will be the percentage we're talking about. So now um, let's quickly do the exercise. Right? I want you really to practice this. So let's go to the test book. Yep, so turn to the test book, right? And then let's move on to exercise from section 3.2. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, now just uh, look at question two and then question four. Two and four. Continuous compounding, right? And question four, yeah, continuous compounding, but uh, you're looking for interest rate. So I give you a couple minutes, uh, work on those two.
All right, so let's look at question number two. Um, so you're looking for how much, right? How much meaning um, we're looking for the uh, principal because um, it will be $100,000 in account after 11 years, five months, and interest rate is given. So we're looking for the um, initial investment, or you can call that principal. Principal is unknown here. The rate is given 3.99%. And uh, any balance, 100,000. Tan is also given 11 years and then five months. And typically, we will turn into a fraction. So it's 11, 5, 12. Now, next thing is turn into an improper fraction. 11, by 11 times 12 is 132. 132 times 12, adding 5, over 12. 11 by 12, it's 132. So 132 adding five is 137. So now once you know all three of them, then we'll be able to solve for P. So ending balance equal principal times e to the RT. And you have to check the keyword, right? Continuous compounding. That must be presented. And 100,000 equal to principal. I is 3.99% is 0 0.0399. So 0 0.0399 times 137 by 12. You multiply these two, right? We can do that. Just to simplify a little bit first before we move forward. So 0 0.0399 times 137 becomes 5.4663. So I'll get 100,000 equal principal times 5.4663 at 12. Now I'm um, solving for P, so you just have to divide both sides of the equation by by this exponent, so dividing e with 5.4663 at 12, e raised to 5.4663 by 12. And we cancel the exponent base e and p is by itself, so p equal to 100,000. So e 5.4663 at 12. Let's, let's see what the present value is by throwing to the Excel. And let's see what that is. So it's 100,000 divided by EXP 5.4663 divided by 12. And that should give us a result. Just hit enter, you get right, sixty-three thousand four hundred eleven dollars and fifty fifty cents. That should be the initial investment or principal. You put it down. Sixty-three thousand four hundred eleven dollars and fifty cents. And that's a question, question two, question four. Okay. And what interest rate? So definitely we're looking for the interest rate. Uh, the money grow from $98,789 to $123,822 in 15 years and 11 months, assuming continuous compounding. Initial investment of principal 98,789. Uh, ending balance 123,822. Time T is also given 15 years, 11 months. So this is 15 and 11 over 12. Again, we turn into a improper fraction 15 times 12, adding 11. 
divide by 12. 15 times 12 is 180, adding 11, 191 by 12. 191 over 12. This is very important, right? You have to do the conversion, you know, before we get started. And then let's apply the formula A equal to principal times E to the RT. So any balance 123,822. Principal is 98,789. That's E. I is what we're looking for. We know the T is 191 by 12. Step one, we will um, get rid of the 98,789 from both sides of the equation. Okay. So dividing 98,789 from both sides of the equation, so we cancel the coefficient. So we get E, 191 over 12 T. 123,822 divided by 98,000 789. Then we're taking the LM from both sides of the equation first. LM, the whole thing. So offset each other. And here is LM of 23,822 over 98,789. Professor, instead of yeah. T, uh, it would be R, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. You're totally right. Yeah. I overlooked, I write on the wrong thing. Yes, the I is missing, T is given, right, definitely. We're not solving for T, we are solving for R. Very good, very good um, catch. So let me just quickly um, erase those. Okay, let me erase this and also that. Okay, and uh, let's see, all right, so let me just look around, yeah. Okay, so R. Yes, that's what we're looking for. So now here, um, uh, these two offset each other and E, so we get 191 over 12 times R. And then LN of this whole thing, 123, A22 over 98,789. And then um, we use a reciprocal. So reciprocal is 12 over 191. Multiply that to both sides of the equation. And they're all reciprocal, right? Cancel each other. It's I's by itself. And uh, we just have to simplify this. Okay, get the result. Okay, so let's give it a put into Excel. So here we go, LN of um, 122,000. Um, 23,822. Twenty three thousand eight hundred twenty two by seventy eight thousand nine hundred eighty seven. Yeah. Let me check eight hundred seven hundred eighty nine. Ninety eight thousand seven hundred eighty nine. Seven hundred eighty nine. So we have that and dividing by. No, multiply by 12 over 191. Okay. And uh, that's proper input. And um, once you hit enter, you get a result. And let me double check the number one more time. Okay. The number is good. Okay. Here you go. So the answer is um, 0 0.0142. So we keep it as four decimal places. 0 0.0142, that's the rate we're looking for. 0 0.0142, so that means it's 1.42 percent. Only continuously, and yeah, that's that's really what, that's the rate we're looking for. Now um, let's look at question six, right? I want you to quickly look at question six. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes to try that first. So after 10 years, 57,000 grows to 96,500. And account continues compounding. How long will it take money to double in this account? So again, it's a doubling, doubling problem. So 
So give a shot. Anybody want to share your answer to this? Professor, I have a question over here. Definitely, yeah. I don't know if my answer is right, but if I get like a decimal amount, do they want us to show the years and the month or just like the month? Yes, years and amounts, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, so that means uh, you, most of you guys probably finished. So first part of the question, after 10 years, 
um, this uh, 57,000 grow to 96,500. From there, you'll be able to find out the rate, right? So the rate is not known here. The rate is unknown. We're looking for that. So Tanti is given 10 years. A beginning balance is 57,000. Ending balance is 96,500. And we're solving for rate. And once you know the rate, we'll be able to solve the doubling, doubling problem. But uh, we have to get to the rate first. So here we go, um, ending balance equal principal times e to the rt. Okay. And just have to throw in both numbers, 96,500 equal to 57,000 times e. And then the, the rate we're solving for that, time t we know is 10. Okay. And first of all, uh, we're dividing 57,000 from both sides of the equation. So then we cancel that coefficient 57,000, drop this both zeros, right? So we have 965 over 570. So e to 10 equals to 965 over 570. And again, we're taking the LM from both side equation, then go from there. So LN of e raised to 10 now. We call the ln of 965 raised to 570. Now, um, simplify ln e offset each other. 10 r goes in the front. 10 r equal to ln of 965 over 570. And from the very last thing, we're dividing 10 from both sides of the equation. Drop the, drop the 10 r is equal to this. And then here, you're going to keep as many decimals as possible because I is not what we're looking for. We're looking for the doubling time. Um, so um, we try to keep it as accurate as possible. So here uh, we do um, LN of 965 over um, 750, no, 570, yeah, 570. And then um, divide by 10. Okay. And whatever decimal we have here, we're going to copy the whole thing, right? 965. Okay, got it. So now we just hit enter and let's get a rate. And the rate turned out to be 0 0.052649, right? at, least, at least six decimal. That's very minimal already, right? And let's go back here. And the rate turned out to be, yes, 0 0.052649. Okay. And again, you want to keep as is. Do not run it, right? Because this, this is an intermediate result. We, we not only want a rate, we also want a doubling time. Now, step one, step two, we're going to look for the doubling time. So again, you can assume for doubling time, initial balance is principal is one dollar, right? One unit and ending balance will be two unit. And we know the rate, copy the whole thing, 0 0.052649. And all we look, need to do is solve for time t, doubling time. One more time, you apply the formula A equals P times E to the RT. I will throw in your numbers two equal to one times E and rate is 0 0.052649 T times T. And then we can omit that one, right? And just basically E raised to 0 0.052649 T, that is equal to two. Now from there, we're taking the LM from both sides of the equation, okay, LN of two on the right, then simplify, get 0 0.052649 T equal ln of two. Now uh, solving for time t, dividing both sides equation by 0 0.052649. 0 0.052649. And cancel that time t is by itself. Yeah. And we just divide ln of two by the decimal number we have. So initial, so ln of two by 0 0.0. 
5, 2, 6, 49. We end up with 13.165. So if you run it to two decimal place, no, one decimal, right? 13.2 years. So that would be the proper answer here. 13.2. If you want to turn it into months, so it's going to be 13 years. So 0 0.2 times 12, that'll be 2.4, right? 2.4 months. And that's, uh, so 13 years, 30 years, 2.4 months. Again, you know, you usually just run it to 13 years and two months. But for a regular running rules, when you, so just drop down to two months. All right, any question on this? Yeah, so let's continue our lecture. So actually the next question is about the APR, right? So let's look at the APR, how, how we deal with the APR. APR is the effective interest rate. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. So next thing is um, basically when you try, let's say get a loan, get a car loan or mortgage from the bank, the bank will give you a rate, right? Um, typically, if you go to, uh, let's say, you open a saving account or checking account, and the bank will always give a rate. Let's say the saving account rate right now is very low, less than 1%. Let's assume 1%, right? So you go to bank, bank tell you if you deposit your money in, in, in the bank, you receive 1% interest. And that 1% being given, um, being offered to you, that's what they call a nominal interest rate. Nominal interest rate is like face value. So whatever they offer you is a face value, right? And if you want to know the actual, actual effective interest rate is the actual interest rate. Meaning you got to look at a compounding period. And actual interest rate is always, it's also called um, APR annual percentage rate, right? Or annual percentage yield. Right. So a API is, a is actual interest rate. It's what they call the effective interest rate because effective interest rate um, consider the compounding period. So if the bank tell you it's 1% compounding monthly, the actual interest rate is more than 1%. Okay. But if you borrow the money from the bank, right? For your car loan, then let's say uh, they, it's 1%, then 1% compounding monthly, at the end of the day, you pay more than 1%. And that's what they call the actual interest rate. So um, let's, let's look at this example. Let's say we have 18% compounding monthly. Okay, so this is a, a nominal interest rate, right? Nominal interest rate is 18%. Okay, and since it's a, that's a compounding period associated with it. And that means interest period is compounding monthly. So monthly compounding here. So we're gonna utilize this monthly uh, compounding thing to get an annual percentage rate, right? Which is what they call APR. So which is uh, actual interest rate. It's gonna be slightly more than 18%. You'll see in a second. So basically, uh, this is just conversion between the nominal interest rate and then the APR, right? That's what we learned for this topic. And this 18% compounding monthly, what it really means is interest rate per month is 18% by 12. So it's 1.5% per month. But remember, um, the interest you earn from the first month, it, it will generate interest for the second month and then the upcoming months. That means, um, that for the second month, the interest rate will be slightly higher compared to the first month. And the number of compounding period, interest compounding period is 12. Those two are important. So the bank will charge 1.5% interest each month on your unpaid balance. So if you borrow money and you will earn 1.5 interest each month on your remaining balance, if you deposit money. So that's basically, um, depends on whether you lend money to the bank or you borrow money from the bank, two scenarios, right? 
but still they're going to charge 1.5 percent interest on the remaining balance um, and this is what they use to find out effective annual interest rate if effective interest rate or apr and you were using this i with a subscript e to represent um, the effective interest rate and you can also call this actual interest rate If you look at the borrowing side, it's actually the real borrowing cost, right? Compared to 18%, it's going to be slightly bigger than 18%. So mean you meaning that means you're paying slightly more than 18%, paying more. And once you figure out the APR, the effective interest rate. So basically, this is a formula we utilize. So R is a nominal interest rate per year. I with the subscript E. Is effective annual interest rate. You can also call that APR. And then A represents number of compounding period. Um, so the effective interest rate is the same as a, a, APR. And now let's look at it. Minus one, right? So it's an interest formula is one plus R over N to the N minus one. Assuming it's one year, right? So here, because it's by default, time T equal to one years. For the simplification purpose, so time to equal to one. So now let's look at this. Still, the eighteen percent compounding monthly case. Suppose you invest a dollar, right, for one year, at eighteen percent compounding monthly, how much interest would you earn? Now let's let's calculate that, right, using compound interest formula, or you can use effective interest rate formula. How many interest? How much interest do you? Would you earn? So we do ending balance first, right? P times one plus R over N to NT. Okay. So using compound interest formula, so P is one dollars, right? Time T equal to one. Okay. And the rate is 18%, which is 0.18. Okay. Then we pretty much N equal to 12, right? It's compounding monthly. So now we Move out of this, plug into the, um, the formula. So here we go. So you have one times one plus rate is 0.18 over 12. So we'll raised to 12 times one. Okay. And uh, so this is basically one plus 0.18 by 12. Well, actually, it's well around the answer. So if you want to turn into a decimal on the number, no problem. 0 0.015 raised to 12 power. So now let's use Excel to get this. So this is going to be um, 1 plus 0 0.015 raised to the 12 power. As you can see, um, run into, let's say, to how many decimal is initial, 18%. So now let's run into three decimal place. So it turned out to be 1.196. So the ending balance in the in this account will be a dollar approximately 1.196. So and then if you look at the, the rate, actual borrowing cost, right? The rate, effective interest rate should be the ending balance minus beginning balance over the beginning balance. So basically, uh, it's going to be 1.196 minus 1. Initial balance is 1 divided by 1. So this turned out to be 0.196 by 1. So it's 0 0.196. 0 0.196, that's 19.6%. So the actual borrowing cost or API is actually 19.6% instead of 18% of the nominal rate, right? Um, so this is just uh, using compound interest formula to get that. If we use the, the formula we just talked about, right? We can get a rate right away. So I of E equal to one plus R over N to the N minus one. So basically we just plug in on the numbers. So it's 0.18 over 12 to the 12 minus one. So this is 1.196 
minus one, that turned out to be 0.196. So this turned out to be 19.6%. So using the formula, right? Talk about from previous or using the compound interest formula, we learned to get the ending balance and using the um, ending balance by the beginning balance divided by the beginning balance that give us the actual interest rate or effective interest rate. And they turn out to be the same result. So now 1.5% um, per month, if you look at it, uh, this is approximately 19.6, we got that. So it's 19.6% compounding annually. And that means um, the actual interest rate here, the actual interest you're paying to the bank or bank paying to you will be 19.6%. So um, that's how we utilize the, this compound interest concept to figure out the actual interest rate. Do you have any question on this? So the nominal rate, the nominal interest rate actually does not give us the accurate, uh, accurate amount in terms of borrowing cost. Um, nominal interest rate is like the face value, right? So you, you usually don't take the face value. You, you, you perform the calculation yourself and figure out the actual borrowing cost or actual lending cost, right? Something like that, um, using the EPR. Now think about this. Um, if your credit card calculates interest based on 12.5% nominal interest rate. So you have, a, you, have a, you have a credit card. Credit card works in a very similar way. What is your monthly interest rate? And then what is the annual effective interest rate respectively? Okay, how do we find out the monthly interest rate? So monthly interest rate, you're just dividing this nominal rate by 12, right? So monthly interest rate. is equal to 12.5% divided by 12. Okay, so this is 0 0.125 by 12. We'll be turning to a decimal number, 0 0.125 by 12. This is approximately 0 0.0104. Okay. So that's about 1.04% on a monthly basis. And in terms of finding the effective interest rate, we apply the formula here. So effective interest rate, i.e. equal to one plus R over N, two N minus one. So here this compounding monthly, right? So credit card also is compounding monthly because um, you are paying interest on a monthly basis. So that's why it's compounding monthly. So this is gonna be one plus, rate is, any interest rate is 12.5%, it's 0.125 over 12. The 12 power minus one. And let's see what that is. So again, you just have to plug into the Excel order formula sheet. Then let's get the results. So one plus 0 0.0, no, 0 0.125 over 12 raised to 10, uh, 12 power minus one. Okay. And then the result here is 0 0.1324. So if you run it to four decimal place, Yeah, so it's 0.1324. So the actual interest rate is 0.1324. Many, that's going to be 13.24%. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, that, so that's going to be the uh, effective interest rate, right? So this is the APR, actual borrowing cost. Okay. 
So actually, the, the credit card company is charging you 13.24% APR instead of a nominal rate of 12.5%. So in essence, you pay more um, towards your credit card account. Right. Any question on this? Right. So um, I think I will stop here today. And this Friday, I have a... I have a meeting to attend, right? So I won't be able to make it to the class. So you guys, um, you don't have to join the class this Friday. Right? And then you can just uh, complete the, whatever project you haven't complete. And if you need extension, just let me know, right? Okay, so no class this Friday, all right? Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, no problem, guys. Have okay, have a nice day, guys. Bye. Bye. Talk thank to you guys next Wednesday. Bye-bye.